Right now we are in Los Angeles. I'm filming at Warner Brothers Studios. The film is about P.T. Barnum. Basically, he's the father of the entertainment industry. He started the Traveling Circus of America. They were looked down upon, outcast. No one wanted to know them. People thought that they should be locked away and, you know, never seen. P.T. Barnum, at your service. I'm putting together a show. And I need a star. The movie basically celebrates what's unique in everyone, which is good. I play Tom Thumb. He's basically a really, really short guy, like myself. Although, fun fact, I was too tall for the role. Seriously? I'm like, I never thought I would hear that. I'm like, honestly. I would never think that I would have been too tall for the role. Every one of us is special. And nobody is like anyone else. That's the point of my show. And they said, we're going to have you on your knees for the entire shoot. I'm like, what? What? My knees are permanently calloused now. Film business. Ready? Showtime. Today is the final day of reshoots. I'm very excited, as always, because it's another close-up scene with Hugh. He's very easy to act with. Two years ago, I couldn't possibly imagine that I would actually be in the film industry, like, making this huge film. You don't want to get, you know, too big for yourself, you know, thinking, this is what I'm going to do and this is my plan. You can be in the business one day and you can be out of the business the next day. It's a roller coaster, the acting industry. But you hold on for dear life and you hope it takes you somewhere good. Hey, this is my house. Uh, we're currently living here with my dad. Well, I'm a captain, and you'll get everything I say. Yep. I, I, captain. So my disability is acrodysplasia, um, which is basically my bones don't grow, and I'm very short statured, meaning there's a lot of physical developments don't take place with that as well. A few years ago, you would mistake me as, like, a five-year-old or, like, an eight-year-old. And I've had many times where I've had people follow me around, like the supermarket, shopping centre, asking me, you know, little boy, are you lost? Where's your parents? And I've gotten used to that, but it's still a very annoying thing to have to deal with. Only the last month of pregnancy, we found out he's not growing. I don't like to hear this statement that the doctor said. I don't know what's the future hold for your baby. And it, it sang for me at that time, he's going to die at any time. So when he started going to Gindi, and he always the tidiest among his friends, and the girls <laughs> like to mother him. So he actually draw all the attentions. He always uh, a, a popular person. I went through a bit of a dark time in my teen years. I sort of was very depressed at times. It was in those years where a normal guy should start developing. To me, it was like being completely different to every other guy that's existed. I guess in some point of way, I didn't see any point of going on. And it was very hard. I always would cover that up with a smile. At, at high school, they never knew about it. 
you know, I've come out the other side of it now, so. I am definitely driven and I, you know, I, I keep pushing it until I literally can't go anymore. I'm kind of a workout junkie. <laughs> oh, I can't lift that off. <laughs> In order to try and drop off the childish image, I try and portray like this big adult image. That's probably one reason like I wear suits and I wear less kiddie stuff as you know my mother buys me. That's you know, better. That looks pretty good. Almost perfect. Doctors, when I was born, said to my parents that they weren't sure how long I was going to survive for. When I started seeing specialists, they were like, my life expectancy could be 18. When I started like trying to get into acting and nothing happened, I it could have been easy to give up, but I kind of just kept on working at it, you know, even though nothing was happening, I was like, you know, just kept going at it, even though some people told me that it probably wasn't a good idea. There's no job security and all those, you know, reasons why you should give up on acting. Just, yeah, a lot of people know. Hi, I'm Sam Humphrey. I'm 22 years old and I'm 127 centimetres. I did uh, my show well. A few years ago now, cost me about so grand to shoot every penny that I had in my bank account at the time. I don't sell the kids. I ain't no kid. That's good. I like being the centre of attention and I like people and I like to, you know, just play personalities. <laughs> so drama really appealed to me. That's it. You're cool. wrapped on this scene, I think. Cool. Yay, Sandra. Thank you. Did well. Today went really well. Now my plan is to uh, create my profile and send it off to a bunch of casting directors. I wanted to enrol into acting school, but I couldn't afford it. So do you want to just fill out that form yep. there? Cool. But then I started getting roles and I got a part on Neighbours. Beautiful. That's great. Excellent. Great. They gave me a call and asked if I wanted to play the character James Udagawa, who's a financial whiz. He gets mistaken as a kid to start off with, and so that kind of relates back to me because I get mistaken as a kid quite a bit. Let's just have a line run out okay. here. All right. So you're on the phone, still Madison. There's more to acting than just saying the line. You're off the second okay. And action. I need to look in your books. Excuse me. I'm James Udagawa. I'm here as a representative of my family's company. And cutting there, set up to come out. Oh, well done, Sam. Good job. After, like, you know, landing my role on Neighbours, then it was like, OK, I can act, you know, you know, at least I can act, you know, well enough to get on Neighbours. And then getting cast in a huge multi-million dollar, you know, Fox studio film, it kind of blew my mind as, like, Wow, I, I must be able to act, you know, to be able to... For them to have the confidence to cast me in such a big role and, like, to cast me alongside Hugh Jackman. To be honest, the reason I wanted to be an actor was because of Hugh Jackman. Always wanted to do, like, what he did. I was like, that's the guy, I want to be like him. Leaving for New York, I was quite nervous. It was the first time I was going to be away from home by myself. I never thought I would, like, you know, be in business class ever. It's, it's very surreal. Acting alongside Hugh Jackman will be like, um, you know, Hugh Jackman, take one. Uh, you're all good. Sam Humphrey, uh, take 78. Try and get this one right, please. Life in a hotel, it's going to be fun. Um, no real difference at home, I suppose. I spend most of my life in my bedroom anyway. Pro there probably is a lot going on in my head. Like, you know, 
am I good enough? Should I be doing this? Am I, you know, worth them, you know, taking me all the way over there? And am I going to be wasting their time? I've never been away from them for so long. But that's a part of it. Uh, Got to push them out of the nest and hope they can flap their wings before they hit the ground. long day, about 3 a.m.-ish. One of my scenes, I was kind of in a very awkward position um, for quite a while, um, and it was quite painful. My back hurts a lot. You definitely got to have passion for the industry, otherwise you're not going to want to be able to stay up those late nights and go through all the torture and the pain. But it'll be worth it to see myself on the big screen. I'm very happy to say I did get a photo with Hugh Jackman, so score. <laughs> so how, how has the shooting been over the last sort of few days? Um, not bad. It's been pretty stressful. I mean, half of the time that you're on set, you're waiting. Right. Like, I mean, my call times are, like, anywhere from, like, 6 a.m. to, like, 8 a.m. Me and my brother are very competitive people. He uh, runs his own company with uh, his co-founder called Appster. He's very successful. He's around 26 years old. With my brother setting that benchmark, like, in our family, I kind of felt like I needed to rise to that benchmark, which was very difficult, because he said it so fucking high. Now that you're a big movie star, when are you, you going to be moving to LA? I don't... I. Moving Don't to know. the US, man. Living the American dream. I'm trying to figure all that stuff <laughs> out, you know? I don't know. There's still a lot of stuff to do in Melbourne at the moment. Maybe we could even live together again. That could be a possibility. We haven't lived together in what, like? I know. Ten years? I, I feel kind of like a bad brother because I, I kind of just went to the US. I was like, see ya. But <laughs> yeah. maybe we can we can be re reunited <laughs> as a family. But, you know, I think you were you were in a bit of a bad place, but... You know, you've made it out, and obviously it's just the beginning. Like, that's mm. it's, it's going to be a bit of a journey for you, but, um, I mean, I think you should keep, you know, going forward with that philosophy, right? Like, what's next? Honestly, what can you do next? When I began, I mean, honestly, I didn't... I couldn't have imagined it was going to take me to where I am now. And I've always had that, you know, wanting to be independent no matter what, you know, mm. my disability is or whatever. And mm. I think, I mean, like, with getting cast in the role that I'm in, Tom Thumb, it, I think it's a perfect representation of me because being short and being the life, like, the life that I've lived, Tom yeah. Thumb or Charles Stratton, he was short and he was hit away from the world and stuff. But then, you know, when P.T. Barnum discovers him, he, like, literally completely transforms his life and he becomes, he becomes from being this guy locked away from the world to becoming like, the, like one of the stars of the show and being out in the open and everyone adores him and he becomes like, you know, famous. Yeah. I, I definitely think there's a, a, a different confidence in him. I think he's sort of embraced even, even like himself as a, as a human being, and I just notice a 
a general sense of just better confidence in him. I'm gonna push him to, to really move to LA and, and, and stay here for a bit because I think that he needs to be here and um, really jump on as many opportunities as he can. So I think that he can do a lot more. I'm, I'm super, super excited for him. I think he's, he has all the talent in the world. Not only that, but he's just a genuinely, I'm not saying this because he's my brother, but he's just such a genuinely nice, loving, just incredible human being with an amazing character. I love him a lot because of what he's achieved and he's, He's always pushed the boundaries, no matter what people have said, that he can't do it or, you know, there's no way that, you know, someone your age or someone that young can achieve, you know, all these impossible goals. And I think at the same time, like, because he's given me a lot of inspiration as well and told me, like, you know, just to keep pushing and don't give up and stuff like that. And so I think it's helped a lot because I see where he's gone and I've seen what he's done um, despite what people have told him. And it's kind of like, well, if he can do it, you know, then anyone can do it. And like, with that competitive edge, it's always, it's kind of like, well, I have to do it too. I feel like, you know, this is just really the beginning for you. And I think you just got to keep pushing, man. Like get yeah. out here, challenge yourself, you know, get outside your comfort zone. And I know you're going to be super successful. I just know it, I really mm. do. You know, I, I sort of like look at the journey and I feel like you really backed yourself. You really, you know, challenge yourself to, mm. to give acting a shot. You know, that's really what what you were passionate about and, and, and how you wanted to make it. Uh, early morning, right, I wake up. up. Getting dull on the list before I bake up. Oh, no. list, green be the thing. Word to my vegetarian team. Sure. Through the sunshine in, step out to taking all the beats. So we're all vegan, all organic. Everything is made from scratch. And we also have a question of the day for each table to discuss. Oh. Today's question is, what are you grateful for? What am I grateful for? Okay. That's a great question. It I is. love it, I love it. All right, take your time. Thank you. <laughs> cool, that's going on my Instagram. What are you grateful for? I have a list of goals of things that I would like to achieve. I would like to set up like a charitable foundation to eradicate poverty. People who are homeless can come in and have a hot meal, have a place to sleep, um, and you can reintegrate them into society. I want to also actually, by the time I'm 25, I do want to be married um, and possibly, you know, have a kid on the way. I want to win an Oscar. Um, Again, I don't know when, I don't know how. Someday I will win an Oscar. I would say my look has definitely changed. I dress a lot more smart casual now. Obviously, I like to look smart all the time. Um, that's also like part of my brand, you know, being the short, good-looking, smooth guy all the time. Um, and Wearing a suit all the time, it's, it's, it's a lot of effort goes into putting a full suit on every single time. So I have my brother, he has uh, definitely helped me with that. He told me that I have to stop wearing most of my old clothes. He actually told me I should get rid of them. Um, he's also told me I should get rid of all my Star Wars shirts, and I said, no. I'm like, never. So I was kind of staying true to myself, because I absolutely love all my Star Wars clothing and everything. Um, I always wear a Star Wars T-shirt underneath all of my smart casual clothing. Just because, to me, it's like I'm still, like, myself. Even though I do love, you know, I love the way I look and everything. It's just still, you know, I have my Star Wars passion with me wherever I go. Ba, 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 ba. We met this guy, Godzilla, that's his name, Godzilla, um, and well, he's a Star Wars geek as well, and yeah, I suppose once a Star Wars geek meets another Star Wars geek, you pretty much you bond, you bond for life. There's a lot of nerd stuff that takes place when two Star Wars nerds get together. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite scene in Star Wars, man? Ooh. Your favorite scene in Star Wars? I don't know if I have a favorite. It's just you got to pick one. You got to pick one. <sighs> You're putting me on the spot. I, 
Dude, this is all about being on the spot. This is a camera rolling. <laughs> what the heck? Um, okay, you are the spot. I didn't put you on the spot. You are the spot, yo. Okay. So um, be the spot. Don't try it, Anakin. I have the high ground. You underestimate my power. Give me your best Smeagol impersonation. Oh, boy. Process. It comes to us. That's actually creeping me out. <laughs> Barack uh, Obama was saying, we cannot go over there and do that to those people. <laughs> it's just not acceptable. All right, power rings unite. Wait, wait, you got to touch rings. Ah! We out! <laughs> you used to look good. You used to look special. Rehearsals were very, very stressful. Dancing? I'm not a dancer. I will make that perfectly clear. So if I had to dance, I would just spend hours rehearsing the dancers in my apartment to hit the right timing. In the end, we got there. But I got told that I didn't need to dance, which was, it was a bittersweet moment, to be honest, because I spent a month and a half and even longer while we were filming, stressing out, freaking out that I was going to stuff it all up to come into film day when we needed to film the dancers to being told, oh, no, don't worry, um, you're not going to be in the dance anymore. I'm like, cool. I was like, I was, I was happy. I was like, thank goodness, because it would be a train wreck. But that's film business. For me, a lot of things are very difficult. Day-to-day -day life is hard. I'm a very driven person to be independent, to not have people help me so much. It's a little bit of a weakness for me as well, I suppose, in terms of being a little too prideful to ask for help because I want to be so independent. But like, you're in the grocery store, for example, if something's up on the top shelf, all the cheap stuff is on the top shelf, so the short people can't Grab it. So I swear all short people have to buy all the expensive stuff. That's my supermarket conspiracy theory. <sighs> so I generally climb the shelf to grab like the cheap stuff on the top. And it's always a little bit awkward if I try and wait for the aisle to be clear so that it's not like five people in the aisle watching me scale a shelf and then struggle to try and grab, like, something down. Obviously, LA is where it's all happening. Uh, that's where all jobs are, auditions are and everything. Whether or not I move to LA or not, is still up in the air. Things are nice in Melbourne. I've got like a, you know, I have my TV pilot going and that's getting a lot of attention. It's uh, called Jeremy the Dud. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm here about the job. Oh, it's a really strong handshake. We're in a world where everyone has a disability and a few people don't have a disability. And they would be like the, they would be like the social outcast. Why don't duds have normal jobs? It's not nice to call people duds. We say without specialty. Saying without specialty sounds just as mean as calling someone a dud. No, it's not. It's proper. Yeah, with, without specialty is the official term. Because he doesn't have a disability, he's looked down upon, he's treated like he's stupid. Kind of like, a little bit like how society kind of views it today. Um, they kind of think that maybe people with disabilities can't do tasks that, you know, normal, able-bodied people can do. Excuse me, you're in a park for people without specialty. So what? So I happen to be sitting here with a poor man who is not special. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Some people are so ignorant. It's great, it's incredible, I love it. Partially blind, jerk. Oh. 
I am right now kind of working on my autograph. Um, a lot of people have said to me that they need to get my autograph. And to be honest, I don't have one. <laughs> so I'm working on sort of developing one, um, which is simple, yet complicated enough that people can't copy, as well at the same time, one that I can do every single time, which looks the same and is the same. Because the worst thing you want is, you know, to sign for a fan and then sign for another fan and it's different and then there's a dispute and you know this is this is Sam Humphrey's this is Sam Humphrey's autograph. No, this is it, this is it, this is it. You know, you don't want that hassle. Will I be typecast? I will definitely be typecasted. Especially at the start of my acting career. Typecasting is a big thing in the acting industry because, you know, they understand the types of roles that you can play and, I mean, being sure, I'm going to probably be cast as a kid more often than not. And to start off with, obviously, you take the roles that you get. There is no plan B. There's no backup plan. I used to think, if acting doesn't work out, what do I do? I need a plan B and everything. But my brother's giving me this advice. He says, if you really want to go for something, don't have a backup plan. Because a backup plan is basically saying to yourself, you're going to fail and that you need something else to fall back on. So if you don't have a backup plan, then you have to make plan A work. It's just, it's do or die. This is me. Never made a difference by being like everyone else. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.